Great things he has done. Hi, I'm Bishop Hewlin A. Hannah, and welcome to another opportunity for us to get into the Word. Yes, the Word with Bishop Hewlin A. Hannah. I thank God for his faithfulness. I thank God for the way he has kept us. He has been keeping us, and by faith, the way he will continue to keep us, his children. Today, we want to speak on this topic Stop trying to kill what cannot die. Stop trying to kill what cannot die. I begin reading from Matthew chapter 26, verses 1 to 4. And the Bible says, And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto a palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. I have read for us Matthew chapter 26 verses 1 through 4. The story of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ is by far the most intriguing one that you will ever encounter. It is a story of a God who loved his fallen creation so much so that instead of destroying and replacing them when they disobeyed him, he put in motion the plan of redemption. Jesus, on the other hand, came into this world with all of its attendant sin and uh, godlessness and executed the plan of the Father flawlessly. He made no mistakes. There were no miscalculations on his part. Jesus did exactly what the Father directed him to do in his divine counsel. But on the way to the cross, he was met, that is, Jesus was met with hatred, hostilities, demonic activities, hypocrisy, and many more offensive attacks of the enemy. All of these were designed to do primarily one thing, and that was to frustrate Jesus from completing his mission here on earth. I take us to Luke chapter 19, verse 10. And here's what the passage says. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, Jesus was always on point. He was always on message. No one distracted him from what he was here to do, not even for a split second or a nanosecond. Jesus was laser focused on the will of the Father. And the will of the Father for his Son was to seek and to save that which was lost. This mission was meant for you and me to be reconciled back to God through Jesus' vicarious death on the cross. But his enemies, the enemies of Jesus, sought ways to stop this from happening outright. They wanted to deny humanity the opportunity to repent of their sins and to receive new life in God through Jesus Christ. And so they, con they connived and schemed to come up with ways to do what was in their hearts to do. And when they saw that they were not going to have any success in slowing down the plan of God for humanity, they then embarked on a mission to kill Jesus. Now, this is an amazing thing to consider. These people, the enemies of Jesus, were not able to stop or to thwart the plan of God for the redemption of humanity. And so, to add insult to injury, instead of ceasing and, and going back to whatever it was they did, they determined that if we cannot stop him, from doing what he's come to do. We will kill him. But let me tell you something. When God has a plan, when God has a work for his people, in this case, when God had a work for his son to do, no weapon that was formed against Jesus could, pro could prosper. 
I'm saying that within the context of sometimes we are struggling with issues. We struggle with people and circumstances. And sometimes the odds are insurmountable or so they seem. But when we allow God to take charge of our situation, we discover right away that he encircles us. He encamps us. He encamps about us. And his protection that he provides for us is impregnable. No one can penetrate the defense that God puts around his children. I'm saying that to us today because even as you're viewing this message, you may be grappling with fear, with intimidation, with anxiety, because you're concerned that what it is you ought to be doing, you may not be doing it. And so you feel pressed into a corner and you feel as if this is a losing battle. Child of God, if God is in your corner, you are not fighting a losing battle. I dare say, if God is in your corner as he is, as his child, you are on the winning side. And so these persons who wanted to take Jesus out, they did not know or understand that the Son of God, Jesus, was beyond human attacks or plots to either have him killed or intimidated. They did not understand that you cannot kill that which is eternal. Can I say it again? They did not understand that you cannot kill that which is eternal. They did not understand that you cannot kill something that cannot die. Try as you may, plot as you wish, scheme as you are inclined. You cannot kill something that cannot die. God's only begotten son is eternal and nothing can change this. It is irrevocable. Jesus Christ is eternal. It was Jesus who would eventually lay down his life, not his enemies took his life. It would, be, it would not be taken from him. He surrendered his life. He surrendered it in submission and in subjection to the will of the Father and not the coercion of men. This is all going to make sense in a while. In John chapter 10, verses 14 to 15, here's what the Bible says. I am the good shepherd, and my sheep know me, or I'm known by my sheep, and I'm known of them. Verse 15 says, As the Father knoweth me, even so I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. You hear it again? I lay down my life for for the sheep. Anyone who saw Jesus on the cross and thought that that was failure or defeat need to have an appreciation for what this passage says. Listen to John 10 and 15 again. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep, verse 16, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd this is not the words or these are not the words of a losing or a diminished christ these are the words of a victorious son of the living god there are other sheep i must bring them i will bring them this also tells me that the God who through Jesus Christ saves humanity will always be the same God through Jesus Christ who will continue to save humanity until God calls us home to be with him or he calls us to account to him at the seat of judgment. And so today I want us to appreciate that God is there for us. Jesus Christ is there for us. And regardless to what is happening in your neck of the woods, regardless to what is happening in your private and intimate affairs, you cannot kill something that will not die. God is with us for eternity, not the long haul. Jesus, his son, is with us for eternity, not 
a point in time. The Holy Spirit is with us forever and ever and ever. We can put our trust in God because God will be here for millennia. God will be here from everlasting to everlasting. God is not going anywhere and God will not be diminished at all. And so verse 17 says, Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. I lay it down, I surrendered it, and I am going to take it up again. No man, verse 18, taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received from my father. And so you see the relationship there? Jesus is saying, I am not acting on my own. I am connected to my father. And everything that I am doing, I am acting under the unction and the inspiration of my father, which is in heaven. We have it from Jesus himself, that no one was going to take his life, but he and his father were on one as far as how his earthly life would end. He not only gave up his life, but three days later, he took it up again, and he is alive forevermore. What does, this, what does all of this say to you and me today? Well, it is a clear indication that God has an eternal plan for his children, and that there is nothing in his plans that can be deferred or stopped by the enemy as long as we obey God. Do not be intimidated by your circumstances. Do not be pushed into a corner by the situations and the issues of life. Know that if God has destined something for you, it is for you. They can hate you all they like. They can despise you all they wish. They can create all kinds of barriers and obstacles for you, but God will give you the victory. God will give you exactly what he has spoken into your life. I want to say to someone today, get in the habit of saying about yourself what God is saying about you. God is saying, I am more than a conqueror. God is saying, I am an overcomer. God is saying, I have victory over my situation. Get in the habit of personalizing and saying and affirming to yourself and your family and those within your sphere of influence, saying and affirming what God is saying to you. Bless your name, Jesus Christ. Sometimes we give the enemy too much energy. We give the enemy too much attention. And so we have a failed enemy walking around as if he is in victory or as if he has the victory, which he does not have. Our victory is in God through his son, Jesus Christ. I encourage us to be bold with this. I encourage us to be bullish with this. I encourage us to testify of the goodness of God in our lives and the fact that we can stake our claim on his word. What God speaks is not idle. What God speaks is not something that is pulled out of out, out of some out of thin air. What God speaks into the lives of his children comes from his divine counsel. God has a will for you and God has a will for me. Nothing, nothing the enemy does can change what God has for us. And so I say it again. We have it from Jesus himself that no one was going to take his life, but he himself was going to lay it down. Three days later, he came back to life. And it says to us that God has provided for us in Christ Jesus those things that pertain to victory and a victorious life here and an eternal future with him. Now, there are some things about you and me that no one can cancel or destroy. In other words, you cannot kill that which cannot die. The anointing that God has on your life or on the life of his children cannot be killed by those who objective 
is to rob us of his will. If you are anointed, raise your hand and give God praise and glory. If you are filled with God's spirit, don't be bashful. Don't be inhibited by what you see happening around and in the external environment. If you are anointed by God, no one can take the anointing off your life. Here's the proviso. As long as you are humble before God, the anointing that is on your life will be vibrant, will be robust, and the enemy can come as much as he wants to. You are anointed. You are anointed. You are anointed. Jesus came to this earth, and after his enemies saw that they could not confound him with their baseless matters of the law, that they could not successfully discredit him for eating with sinners, that they could not pit him against his father, diminish the miracles that were done right before his, their very eyes, nor that they could ignore the hundreds of lives he transformed. The next thing these people wanted to do then was to stop him from going to the cross. Okay? The first, in the first instance, they tried to frustrate his mission. And then they plotted to kill him. And then the next thing now is to stop him from going to the cross. And you're going to see where it eventuates into where Jesus went to the cross. How could someone who looks like a loser be a winner? How could someone on a cruel, ruggedy cross, the disdain, the shame of, being, of, be, of losing your life on a cross, how could someone in those circumstances be declared a winner. Well, Jesus is the Son of God. And beloved, I want to say to you right now, people may be looking at you and wondering, how dare you testify that you have victory in your life? How dare you say that you are a man and a woman of God? Your family seem to be going everywhere but right. Your, your, your health seem to be in the pit. Your finances is a disaster. All of your relationships seem to have crashed. How dare you say that I have the victory? You have the victory because the victory is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I want to tell somebody, do not allow your current circumstances to dictate what your future life will look like in God. Serve Him. Serve Him. Remain focused in on Him. And the things of this life and this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his eyes. So turn your eyes on Jesus. We all want to live a good life. We all want to live above a certain level. But I can tell you, my friends, my brother, my sister in Christ, it is better to suffer disdain here in time than to suffer eternally and be in complete alienation from God. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. And so I want to say this. I do not know what you are up against at this juncture in your life. I do not know how threatened you may be by your enemies. I do not know what people may have on you. You know, people love to have dirt. And you know, sometimes we look at, we look at social media and social media is a miraculous and a wonderful invention. But do you know how many people harm and destroy persons' reputation? They impugn their character just by using social media. Do you know how many people have been destroyed by lies, by innuendo, just on social media? I do not know what your enemy has on you, but be assured that whatever God has for you, those who are attempting to kill it and kill you are wasting their time. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. You cannot kill that which cannot die. You are wasting your time conniving and scheming to try and derail and extinguish the fire of the presence of God in the lives of his children. The more you try to douse the fire of God's anointing and God's power in the lives of his children, the more explosive it becomes. If I were you, I would just stop in the name of Jesus Christ. 
the more you come up against your child of God, the more you will recognize that you are, in, you are not engaging in just any little thing, but you are in warfare with the child of God. And when you are in warfare, in warfare with the child of God, the presence of God comes to the defense of the child of God. I want to say to my Christian friend, uh, my Christian brother and sister, stop fighting this war in a carnal way. Stop fighting this war in your flesh. Stop fighting this battle with your human intellectual acumen, but, but allow and engage the Holy Spirit to fight with you. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down and the dismantling of strongholds, these holes that latch themselves onto the mind. God can give us victory in the name of Jesus Christ. This, this feeling of angst that you go through night after night, cannot sleep, wondering if, 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 if it's all worth it. It is all worth it. You're not going to wake up one day and find out that you're not saved anymore. You're not going to wake up one day and find out that you've been disinherited by God. If you obey God, if you follow his word, whatever they plot or whatever they scheme, you cannot kill that which cannot die. I think you're receiving it in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I say it again. You soon recognize you, the enemy of God's children. You will soon recognize that the man or the woman that you are fighting against to destroy is being protected by God. Can I say this to someone in the work environment? Don't worry about your colleagues. I sense that they want to destroy you. I sense that they're plotting and scheming to discredit you. I sense the hatred and the venom that they harbor in their spirit towards you. I sense the meanness and the unfairness in their treatment of you. But child of God, I also sense, indeed I know, that the Spirit of God is there to protect you. I know that you don't have to be up tonight worrying and cannot sleep and your blood pressure fluctuating and your sugar fluctuating because you're worried about what people are trying to do to you. Take your vacation in the name of Jesus Christ. Take your casual days in the name of Jesus Christ. God has your back. And the God will watch out for your affairs in your absence. Read your Bible as the children would sing. Pray every day. And you will groan, groan, groan. Stop taking on these great and ugly tasks. Let the Spirit of God fight your battle and watch him win for you. And so God will keep his children. He will protect his children against the fiery darts of the wicked. I want to go into Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 13 and listen to the, listen to the apostle writing to the saints at Ephesus. Oh, bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord, for this word today. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I can't make it any more clear, clearer. Finally, the sum total of it all, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that he might, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the tricks, the snares, the traps, the cunning craftiness of the enemy. You would be able not only to overcome them, but you'd be able to discern them. You'd be able to see them at a great distance off. And the Holy Spirit will not only give you the ability to evade, but the Holy Spirit will give you the ability to destroy in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, bless your name. And here's what it says, verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It is not the people that you see. It is the spirit that possesses the people that you see. The enemy wants you to hate people. Want you to hate groups of people. Want you to hate and despise the organization that you work for. The institution that you are a part of. But it is the spirit. It is that 
evil and scheming and conniving spirit that occupies these people in these places and causes them to behave the way they behave. But listen to the word again. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, layers and layers, hierarchy of wickedness. Bless your name, Jesus. We wrestle against powers. It's a superstructure. It's an organized organization in place to attack the children of God. We, 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 we not fighting flesh and blood, but we are fighting against the rulers of the darkness of this world. You see them, but they are being influenced by sinister demonic forces. They wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor. This is no time to be half-dressed. This is no time to be exposed in the vital parts of your body, your spiritual man, to be exposed to harm, danger, and death. But here's what it says. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil days, or in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Just keep standing. Just keep standing. Just keep showing up on the battlefield every day. Like it or not, just keep coming. Just keep punching. Just keep punching. Keep standing. Keep witnessing. Keep testifying. And watch God. And so, there are no reasons as we move to pray. There are no reasons, beloved in Christ, to fear anything that may be coming your way. God will not abort the mission that he has on your life. You are going to be just all right. Can I say it again? You are going to be just all right. This is, a, this is no fancy talk. This isn't trying to accommodate sin and slackness. I am saying that as a child of God, committed to the will and the way of God, you are going to be just all right. He is going to preserve you. He will safeguard you against anything that is coming against you. They could not kill Jesus and they cannot kill you. Your life is hid with Christ in God, according to Ephesians 3 and 3. You are more than what people see. You are more than a shout. You are more than speaking in tongues. You are more than a brilliant mind. You are a child of God. You are more than a person people see in the work environment or the working or the work the marketplace. You are a child of God. Affirm it. And I say it again, you cannot kill that which cannot die. There is a call on your life. And as long as you, engage, you are engaged in doing what God has called you to do and to be, you will remain, listen to this word, invincible. Cannot die. Cannot be defeated. As long as you are in the will of God. Every weapon that the enemy has trained on you will fall at your feet. God will reveal their plans to you and God will give you instructions how to escape. When your assignment is complete and done, God will beckon you home. Come home, my child. It is supper time, the songwriter says. But until then, keep on serving him. Until then, live a complete life for him. Until then, do not back down. Do not back away from the day-to-day -day challenges, but show up every day and show up for a fight, but also show up for victory in the name of Jesus Christ. He will not let you go and he will not allow others to deter you from the path he has marked out for your life. I remind you, I remind our common enemy, stop trying to kill that which cannot die. You will not kill the anointing that is on my life. He will not kill the anointing that is on your life. You will not kill my prayer life. He will not kill your prayer life. You will not kill nor steal my joy. He will not kill nor steal your joy. 
you will you will not you will not frustrate my desire to be more and more like God. You cannot kill the relationship that exists between God and me. God's word and the promises therein are for me, his child. They are for us, his children. We cannot be pushed into a corner. Beloved, I pray today that you'll recognize that this is bigger than all of us. This is bigger than philosophy. It's bigger than theology. It is bigger than psychology. It is bigger than every branch of science that we grapple with. When we are in God's economy, he redefines everything. And they who push against you will find that they are pushing against God. Stand up for Jesus. Be confident. Be bold. Know that you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Do not let your circumstances dictate to you. There is no end in sight the blessings that God has for you. No end in sight for the rich anointing that God has ordered on your life. No end in sight. And because of that, we declare one final time, you cannot kill that which cannot die. Shall we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. This hour, as we come before your presence, we thank you for the affirmation that we get from your word. We thank you, Lord, that ours is not a life of futility. We thank you, Lord, that this will end when time gives way to eternity. And then and forever and ever, for millennia, we will be with you. And so we thank you. I pray for my brother, my sister, whose confidence may be at the ground level. I pray that you will bolster their faith in you and give them the courage, give them the tenacity to stand up for you. We push back against every pernicious work of the enemy and we declare in this space and in this place that no one can kill that which cannot die. Thank you for our eternal relationship with you and the eternal promises you make to us. Bless and save, Father, those who do not know Jesus Christ as Savior. Heal those who are sick in body, mind, soul, spirit. Bring back the backslider. Give us the confidence level to know that who you save will remain saved as long as we are faithful to you. Who you keep is well kept as long as we remain faithful to you. We thank you again, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Beloved God, bless you. What a wonderful time it has been. Just fellowshipping in the word of God. Let's now go and grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Until the next time, I am Bishop Hewlett A. Hannah, and I hope to see you when we see each other again. God bless you.